of his Imperial Majesty King Charles V of Alvonia, and in accordance with the procedure of his royal court, I hereby proclaim the Imperial Council of Alvonia to be an executive session. Be seated. Be seated, gentlemen. Have I omitted anything? We forgot the king. Where is the king? His Imperial Majesty, King Charles V of Albonia. Majesty, I wish to submit this question to you, to you and to members of this council, and I urge you all to support it. Now then, gentlemen, I have carefully considered this draft for the extra court taxes, and I still insist the rate is not too high. We must have additional money support our royal court in the splendid manner that our dear people expect of it. But Count, don't you feel that the high rate will be a burden to our people at this time? No, not in the least. For it is our duty to run this kingdom as we see fit in order to maintain the confidence of our people. <laughs>
Come up here, young man. I'll attend to you. What are they doing? Trying to abuse you? Oh, I'm all right now. I might have been hurt if you hadn't come along. I'm... I'm lucky. <laughs> I'm lucky, too. I'm the luckiest. This is the proudest day of my life. I wouldn't trade places with a king. Well... Never having been a king, I don't know what it would be all about. I do, and I'd rather have all the boys in town see me sitting up here than sitting in any throne in the world. Well, if that's the fact, we'll just have to show you off to the rest of the boys. Come on, fellas. Yeah, I don't get it. Our advance agent must have been on the job. That's me. I always affect the women that way. <laughs> yeah, that's your fatal duty. Yeah. Maybe it's me that's always Well, that might be true, son. How would you like to be our mascot while we're in town? May I? Yeah. That's great. Uh, permit you to be seen with people who go to circus. But we're people. It seems good enough for the king to see my imperial nephew riding in the parade. And you know, my dear doctor, the king can do no wrong. I have an idea, Dr. Lorenz. We're going to the circus. You better put me down now. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you tired? Oh, no, not at all, but... I think I'd better be going. I'll tell you what I'll do. Here's some tickets. The doorman will let you in free. Get down and see the show. Oh, thanks very much. Say, what's your name? Charles. Your last name? Charles, King of Algonia. Huh, that's funny. I knew a man down in Texas the name of Charles King. Had one of the largest cattle ranches there. Couldn't be that you was one of his relations. It isn't likely. I'm Charles V, King of Albony. <laughs> That's funny. I was the fifth child in our family, too. Well, I gotta go now. I'm a Santa Claus. That little rascal isn't a real king. Give this to the man at the gate and he'll let you in free. <laughs> Come on, fellas, let's go on here. Queen Fernanda of Albonia. Your Majesty is just in time. I have some very important matters to discuss with you.
Now, what is the next move? After the king is located, you are to humor him into signing the new tax bill today. That shall be an easy matter for me. It will be easier for both of us after the bill is signed. My dear Count, we are facing a crisis. What's wrong? His Majesty has refused to sign the new decree for the additional court tax. I'll see about that. Am I to understand that you refuse to sign the authorization for the new increase in court taxes? I didn't refuse to sign. I simply said I was not interested. But those are grave matters of state, Your Majesty, and cannot be trifled with. There must be some reason for your lack of interest in an issue that should be so important to Your Majesty and to all of us. There's something more important to me. Who has influenced your majesty? Oh, I just have to go to that circus. It is only our great concern for your majesty's safety that denies you the right to go. There's always grave danger in crowds. And should anything happen to your gracious majesty, the blame would be ours. Happy subjects have no reason to want to harm their king. Your majesty must not be unmindful that the new and increased taxation has created many enemies amongst the crone. Count and huh? uh, Upon reflection, I withdraw my objection to his majesty's going. Knowing that it means so much to our sovereign's happiness, May I take the princess and Dr. Lorenz along with me? Mm, that we agree to also. And you may rest assured, we'll take every precaution to safeguard your majesty. Well, I'll be safe, all right. Tom Reed will be there, and he's my friend. Mm, and now, and now that that's all settled, will your gracious majesty sign just here? That may wait until after the circus. Hmm. So our young monarch is becoming hard to handle, eh? No, it was deliberate coming, but he evaded the signing of that tax bill. Oh, nonsense. His interest is elsewhere for the moment, but that suits me, so long as his mind is diverted from the real disposal of the taxes. You know, uh, I've never been to a Wild West show. Uh, do you think it would be beneath my dignity? Oh, uh, gentlemen, uh, I could take care of his precious, couldn't I? There's a little fella sitting over there in the box that's probably the most lonesome boy in the whole world, in spite of the fact that he's king of Alvonia. Being king of Alvonia, he is not allowed to go to circuses like other children. So I'm putting on a special performance for his benefit here this afternoon. 
And I hope the little fella enjoys it. And I hope you folks will enjoy it, watching him enjoy it. I thank you. Hey! Go! May we come in? Princess Elsa, sit down. You're just in time. This is wonderful. Oh, oh, doctor, if you don't mind, sit down right here. Yes, Please. you're right. Very well, Your Yes, Your Majesty. I want a horse just like that one. Very well, Your Majesty. Lorenz, 
Never mind that horse. Very well, Your Majesty. I want three of them. Three? Yes. <laughs> yes, Your Majesty. We take pleasure in presenting an exact reproduction of an attack on an overland stagecoach. Dr. Renz, Dr. Renz! Uh, I know, Your Majesty. You want a stagecoach. <laughs> <laughs> Your Majesty. It's all right. Oh, very well, Your enjoyed it. It was a wonderful show, Tom. Well, that's our motto. We aim to give the people their money's worth. Oh, uh, Princess Elsa, I want you to meet Prince Tom. Oh, well, he is an American prince. She's my auntie. Oh, this is an honor. I've never been so thrilled at such an exhibition of horsemanship. You were splendid. And oh, that ride. Oh, you liked that, did you? <laughs> Oh, uh, Mr. Reed, my friend, Gretchen, how do you do? How do you do? Oh, uh, this is my friend, Red. 
I'm delighted to meet you. How you do? Oh, uh, my tutor, Dr. Lorenz. Doctor, I'm glad to know you indeed. Thank you. It must be a great privilege to live so deeply in the hearts of all the world's boys and girls. Well, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it while I'm doing it. That's the nicest thing I ever heard anyone say. Oh, uh, uh, Tom, why don't you come over tomorrow before the show starts? And uh, I want some of my officers to see a man who can stay on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, but I'm not very well equipped for clothes to go king visiting. When you're as splendid as you are, I'll be expecting you. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be there if I have to crawl. Um, bring your friend along, too. That's the date. Well, we've got to be going. Goodbye. 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 Uh, I like him an awful lot. Why don't you call me Buddy like he does, Annie? <laughs> All right, Buddy. Come on, let's go home. chair there, is it? <laughs> Doesn't look very comfortable. Never has been to me. Why don't you try it? Oh, I'd look funny sitting in there. Go on and try it. Is it all right? Sure, go right ahead. Hmm. <laughs> I'd be all right now if I had a crown. You wouldn't want one, if you ever had one on. There. That's your crown. You said a mouthful, buddy. A mouthful. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> Very good. I said a mouthful. Tom, you're a knife. <laughs> well, I bet you get mighty lonesome uh, sitting up here all by yourself. Lonesome? By Tom, you said a big mouthful. You're okay, buddy. Okay. Yeah, that means that you're all right. Oh! <laughs> here, come on over here and sit down. Tom? It would be okay if I had you with me on all my state occasions and I could sit here like this. <laughs> well, that wouldn't be dignified. Cowbunkluck's thing would expand and burst. <laughs> you must feel awful proud to run a country and look after its affairs. Well, I don't have anything to do with that. County Mar runs the country to suit himself. What do you mean, Count Damar runs the country? You were king. Wait. I'll give you an eye full of Damar. <laughs> Your gracious majesty. Will you please sign this? Why, I haven't even read it. You're not supposed to read it, Your Majesty. You're only a baby. Please sign it. Damar, I wouldn't sign anything until I knew 
what it was all about. <laughs> now you know how much I have to say about running the kingdom. Yes, but you've got to run it when you grow up. No. I'll collect my share of the taxes. Have a good time. Say, buddy, someone has been giving you wrong advice. What would you do, Tom, if you were king? If I was king? Yes. Well, I'd run a fair sort of a government. Give everybody a chance. Life, liberty, happiness. Tom, you said another mouthful. I'd take the people's taxes. I'd build parks. There's schoolhouses, hospitals, roads, public playgrounds. Yes, sir, that's what I'd do. Treat everybody right. Use my position to help the people. That's a wonderful idea, Tom. I'll do it. Then you'd be admired and respected. And they wouldn't be running around hunting you up with a bomb in their hand. Howdy, boys. Your gracious majesty. My dear counselors, I want you to meet my good friend, Tom Reed. Glad to meet you, man. Well, uh, I reckon I'd better be going. Uh, I gotta put the show on. Oh, well, goodbye, Tom. I'm sorry I can't see you to the gate. Oh, that's all right. I'll be seeing you. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, so long, folks. Goodbye, buddy. Adios, Cluck. My loyal counselors, will you kindly step forward? But your majesty. If you don't mind. I'd like to talk about the government. We shall be highly honored, Your Majesty. What I want to say is life, liberty, and happiness for all my people. Isn't it a great idea? I knew you'd see it right away. We'll stop cheating our people. We'll spend less on the army and more on schools and good roads. And give the people our money's worth. One moment, Your Majesty. As Prime Minister, I would advise you not to adopt such radical measures without thought. But I've been thinking it over for hours. You should think it over for years. But it's such a keen idea. It's okay. Nobody could find fault with it. We'll spend the tax for the good of all the people. And then they will complain about paying them. Sign this new court tax bill, and we'll discuss your plans later. We'll discuss my plans right now. And I feel that the extra tax is unnecessary. Your gracious majesty, I would suggest you go to the royal study. We'll follow later and draft the bill for life, 
liberty and happiness. Okay, Demar, you set them up. This is what comes of admitting a foreigner to the palace. Come to Ma. My dear Count, I'm quite upset about it. I was never so disturbed in my life. About what, Your Majesty? About the princess. She must be going out of her mind. I saw her talking with that common cowboy. Mm. Speaking of insanity, his Majesty, the King. Oh, is the dear boy really going crazy? We'd best discuss it privately. I tell you, Blood and Iron is the only government the peasants know. It is time we took drastic measures. It is time you were on the throne. My dear Count, you are always so sensible. What can I do to help? You see that His Majesty King Charles V takes his usual ride in the Grunwald tomorrow morning. And I will see that this cow artist doesn't do any more meddling. things later, Dr. Lorenz. Ethel, take very good care of our two guests. Amberton, are you sure your movements are covered? That no one saw you? Your orders were executed as given, sir. What about the bodyguard? The grooms? They are sound asleep. Good. Thank you. How about the little prize agreed upon? Very well.
disappeared. He may be dead by now. Yesterday he astonished the councillors. He wanted to reorganize the government and make it a republic for the good of all the people, you know. That's what he said. How about Count DeMar? Does he know anything about this? No, we can't find him. But the older states would do anything rather than to give up their power. It's suicide to oppose them. I tell you, it's suicide. And I'm so afraid for him. Don't worry. I'll do everything I can to bring that boy back to you. Oh, thank you. Where did you see him last? He went riding in the groom ball with Dr. Lorenz and two grooms. And he hasn't returned yet. I know something's happened to him. I know it. Well, don't you worry. Hey! Go! Hey, go! Go! Hey! Get a urban man mounted here. Get ready for a fight. Any shooting? Maybe. We can't. We're out of bullets. That is all? Nothing but blanks. We're using the shore. You got all the bullets in your gun. Well, that's all right. Give every man a 10 state. You fellas shoot the flank. Come on. Yeah, pull. And knock it, he pull. Hey, Interference. The invaders are to be brought to me here alive. You understand? Dr. Lorenz, for reasons of state, the king must die. And of course, you must die with him. Now, as to the means. My jailer, Etzel, is very expert in these matters, but his natural tendency is to make death unpleasant and cruel as possible. Now, so long as necessity compels you to leave this world with your king, I suggest you hand the affair yourself. ready to execute my orders. That's all. Goodbye, Doctor. I admire your splendid quality.
won't leave you. I'll never leave you again. Why doesn't Kelsey want to go to school? What does he want with us? Come. Come on and sit down. Sit down, Charles. And I'll tell you all about it.
remember, you are a king.
time to do much thinking. Well, we parked this bozo. Well, they tried to drown the king and the doctor. Use your own judgment. Let's take him over in the corner, Clyde. Come on, young man. <laughs> We've got to get you home. Joe, you dropped something. How do you do? Well, I'm awfully glad you came down to see us off. Go ahead, Cloud. I'll catch up with you. Yes, we had to come down and tell you goodbye, and thank you again for your service to our little kingdom. Well, that makes you very proud indeed. You won't ever forget us, will you, Tom? <laughs> I should say not. And I'm coming back, and don't forget that. And we won't see you again for a long, long time? Gee, I don't like to talk about it. I'll never forget life, liberty, and happiness. <laughs> well, I hope you put it over, buddy. Goodbye. And long live the king. Goodbye, Tom. You've given me something to remember. And I won't forget any of it. And goodbye to you, Princess. Goodbye. God bless you, Tom. Thank you.